Well, meantime, MIT has canceled a science lecture by a geophysics professor after activists launched an outrage campaign against him over his views on diversity. That professor, Dorian Abbott from the University of Chicago, joins us now with more. Professor, we're going to get to the cancel culture part of this in a second, but, but I want to talk about the controversy itself first, about your views on diversity. You think it, you know, it's... It's treating people as members of a group instead of individuals, which you say is repeating a mistake that made 20th century atrocities possible. Explain that for us, sir. Yes, that's correct. So a fundamental principle of moral philosophy is that we have to treat each person as an individual with inherent dignity. And if we violate that, we run the risk of repeating atrocities of the 20th century. So that's the danger. Yeah, you say that these activists who actually got this whole thing canceled at MIT should not be blamed because, quoting, they are fish swimming in a sea of confusion. But you go on to write today in Substack, quoting here, the fact that such stories have become an everyday feature of American life should do nothing to diminish how shocking they are and how damaging they are to a free society. The fact that MIT, one of the greatest universities in the world, caved in so quickly will only encourage others to deploy this same tactic. You believe this is a dangerous precedent. Yes, I do. My wife was born in Ukraine and she had to be baptized in secret because if the government found out, her mother would have lost her job. And when she heard about what was happening on campus, when I first told her, she says, it sounds like what my mother told me about Soviet times. So I think yeah. that the free society is at stake here. Yeah, I'm curious because your your speech was was based on climate, right? And so so how was diversity and equity inclusion being brought into this? It has nothing to do with the speech. Uh, that was a criticism of my political positions and an attempt to cancel my talk because I didn't agree politically with the activists. Yeah. You know, you go on to write, Professor, this is not a partisan issue. Anyone who is interested in the pursuit of truth and in promoting a healthy and functioning society has a stake in this debate. Speaking out now may seem risky, but the cost of remaining silent is far deeper. You know, you've said that, that science should not be about politics. Science these days, Professor, is riddled with politics, especially in the middle of this pandemic. Yes, that's true. And we need to all strive to... Uh get the politics out of science and focus on doing our research uh, and move forward together. You know, we talk a lot about this, and it used to be, you know, you learn in college that conformity was the enemy of science and that it was all about robust debate. It doesn't seem like we're holding to that value anymore. Is that a fair assessment in your point, Professor? Final question. I think it depends on the subfield. Uh, we can all try to do better to uh, push the boundaries and uh, uh, not conform to ideologies that could be damaging. Yeah, and I guess lastly, I would ask you, I mean, we talk about this, you know, there's a, a woman on Capitol Hill today and she's talking about Facebook and the influence it has on young people. We've talked a lot about the, the big tech kind of shutting down some of these scientific stories. And if you disagree with the coronavirus, if you disagree with the Wuhan lab leak theory, you are simply shut down. Is that also a dangerous precedent? I think censorship, wherever it exists, should be opposed. Yeah. Professor Dorian Abbott. Thank you for coming on, sir. We appreciate it.